Hello, welcome. I'm Melissa. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to start a little planty plant chores vlog. From my last update I did, I did that uh, probably a week ago. I have since found some spider mites <laughs> that have found their way into my plant room. They're the red two spotted spider mite or something. <laughs> I've had them before and they're pretty easy to get rid of. They tend to pop up usually twice a year. I had them in the spring and then I got rid of them pretty quickly and then they popped up again here. And I think they just come in through my big south window here. Oddly enough, I had them in my cabinet is where I found them. This was the culprit anthurium that was spreading them around and I don't see any more on here. I just took it to my sink and hosed it off with water and then I used Castile soap. I was honestly being a little lazy with my cabinet. This was a little corm off of my Capria. Because I was being lazy, I didn't catch that this little one had some spider mites. And this leaf here is the one that was the most damaged. I don't think it's gonna pick up the little spider mite damage, the sparkles. So I ended up just taking the plants out of my cabinet. I cleaned it and then that was the only thing I did that night because that like wore me out. <laughs> and I started doing this back cabinet the next day and I finished that. And then I think the uh, following day I ended up doing the plants at my window. But I probably found them on like 10 plants. And the plants that had the beneficial mites, I didn't see them on, uh, which was interesting because they must have done a good job protecting my plants. I don't know when they showed up or when, how long they've been here, but I only noticed them, you know, a few days ago. I feel like, you know, the end of summer and summer watering plants, as much as I was watering plants, kind of just like wears me out. And then I kind of got lazy towards the end of the season. So I'm looking forward to fall winter to have a little bit of a break in watering. I feel like even though the air is more dry and the heat runs, I feel like my soil still runs dry pretty quickly. Like I'm still watering about once a week, but some plants don't dry out as quickly, if that makes sense. So I can get a little bit of a break because it's not as hot in here. <laughs> uh, it's the heat and the temperature that dries my plant room out like crazy. So when it's a little bit cooler in winter, uh, they can hold on to water a little bit longer. <laughs> So first thing I'm going to show you is my Anthurium Padado Radiatum pushed out in the inflow with pollen and I already collected the pollen off of it and I put it in the freezer but it has more pollen on it since I did that so I think I'm just going to use the pollen that's on it and rub it with my Clarinervium. My Clarinervium from that update video had, I had mentioned this and I haven't actually shown you guys how I cross an Anthurium, so I'm excited to show you today. So it's starting to get receptive. There's some of that stigmatic fluid and I'm gonna just go ahead and rub them together. And then if there's more stigmatic fluid that happens in the next couple of days, I'm gonna rub it again, probably with the pollen that I have stored because I don't think the Padado radiatum will have more pollen on it in a few more days. Because if I don't cross it, that's gonna move to the male phase pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross it with you today. <laughs> I'm excited to have more, uh, more babies <laughs> if I can cross it in like a year's time. Now I haven't actually looked at the seeds in a little while, but I'm gonna take a peek. So I recently harvested my Clarinervium. I will link that video if you missed it. I just took the lid off. And I only had three seeds after 10 months. <laughs> These are Clary, Clarinervium and Podato Radiatum seedlings. And I did this on 1018. I have a little label. I did peek at them the other day uh, and they were starting to root. Oh, they're growing fuzzy little roots. Okay, let me, let me show you the little seeds. Do you see the fuzzy little root forming? Look at that, it's starting to grow. I just like have them loosely covered. Oh, look at that one. Oh, do you see that one growing? Looks like it's trying to do something right there. <laughs> so I have one seed per pod in here. 
cover him back up. So it's been two weeks. So I imagine hopefully in another like two, three weeks, I can start to see some leaf sprouts happening. I don't, I'm not sure how quickly these ones grow, but my other seedlings that you guys know of that I have a ton in my cabinet, you know, they took like maybe a month and a half, two months, and they were sprouting like crazy. I do have a dark container covering this one because that helped my other seedlings, the ones that were in the dark black container because I think it protects it against light and traps in heat better, so it helped them develop better, I think. So I have this still on here, like 100% humidity. You can still see the condensation and that's closed. So that is still in my cabinet. I want to move that, um, it's pretty far from light, which um, I kind of wanted to move it down to the lower shelf so that it could get better light, but I don't have any room in my cabinet because of all the props. So until I can do that, I'm gonna have to leave them on that top shelf right there. But I do want to like reorganize this one day a little bit better. I noticed this is dry. I'm gonna water this real quick. This is one of my Monstera Aria wet sticks. So believe it or not, there were some spider mites on this one that had found their way inside. I had the dome on it and everything because I think it came from the bottom of this. So I sprayed it and no more have come back on it. Like I said, like it was an early infestation. Um, not anything severe where it had a chance to like attack the plant and eat at the plant tissue. Just this capria was the worst one because I think it had just like landed on it. So now that I have the top on this, the top off on this, it's going to dry a lot more quickly. So I just have to keep it watered, but it's so cute. I'm going to eventually sell this little wet stick. I'm just waiting for it to grow a little bit more. Yeah, that's one of my Monstera arias. It has a tiny bit of variegation on that leaf, but it's barely noticeable. My Clary is doing amazing since the repot. She's tolerated it so well. She is such a trooper because my other anthurium that uh, shocked and had all that rot that happened. UPS is here. My bugs are here. Okay, after I cross my Ethereum, I'm gonna show you the bugs. You, they come by UPS and they just pulled up out front my window. I love when I get my bugs. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's doing so well. And I have, so since I repotted her and everything, I do have new roots that are forming. You can see the roots right there. I don't know if you can see them. So new roots forming. And I have another, I think this might be another inflow right here coming in. And then this was the latest leaf here in the back. That one was the newest leaf. And so this inflow here is the one that has all of this stigmatic fluid. It's the clear substance. I know it's hard to see. So I wanna cross her I'm just going to go ahead and start. It is the evening, so it's better to do it in the morning and evening, but we, we want the stigmatic fluid like all the way down as possible, but I'm going to go ahead and just do what I can today. And then, like I said, if she has more fluid come tomorrow and the next day, I'll cross her with the pollen as much as I can. And my Padado radiatum is right here. Gorgeous Anthurium. It's Anthurium fingers is the other name for it. And it's working on a new leaf too, which is so pretty. Reminds me of like a big spider or something. And I don't like spiders, but I think this plant is so gorgeous. And so this is the uh, inflow that has the pollen. You can see all that pollen there. And I already took pollen off of it once and it's grown all that pollen again. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just literally rub them together. <laughs> I just like rub them up and down. <laughs> and that's literally crossing them. It is a little weird because I haven't done this on camera before. <laughs> so we have our male and our female. <laughs> and all you do is literally just rub them. Now, if you have pollen stored in the freezer, you can take that pollen and, you know, rub it all, all over the receptive one. 
but yeah, we're just going to rub a dub dub. <laughs> just take it and kind of rub that pollen all up and down the inflow. And this one may have more pollen on it in the next couple of days. And if that's the case, then we'll do it again. You can rub the pollen on as many times as you want, as long as there's that stigmatic fluid. I've only ever had to do it one time and it's worked. But again, there wasn't that many of the little, I don't know what those little, each little bump is called. There wasn't that many on here that was having the stigmatic fluid. So, that's why you want to do it as more as you can because more of those little ones that have the stomatic fluid has the chance of turning into a berry. She's crossed. <laughs> now, what I fail to do is I fail to label. So I'm gonna get a piece of tape with today's date and what I crossed her with and put a piece of tape on here. And I'll eventually know it worked when this inflow decides to not yellow and die. Usually after the pollen phase, the inflow will kind of, about a week later, will start to yellow and it will yellow all the way and eventually, like a flower bloom, it just yellows off and it goes. So if it stays and it doesn't do anything and it stays on, then chances are it was successful and you've crossed your anthurium. And clarinervium is very slow. So like I said, today is November 1st. So we're looking at possibly November of 2024 for me to even like potentially get berries. It took 10 months for me, my other one and I only got three seeds. So, you know, we're gonna see what happens again with this one. So let me get a little tape and label and we'll cross and we'll label her. I'm actually just gonna use some Velcro. So 11, one, 20, three, We're just gonna, I just wrote a, a Padato <laughs> and today's date on there. And this probably is not gonna stay with the Velcro. have used tape but I just wanted to use the velcro yay they're pollinated <laughs> that's exciting I don't know I just get excited for that one for when that happens it's just exciting to me in a way I don't know I'm gonna have to do a different like potting up situation with this anthurium how I have it like I did this in a video a while ago it's like a DIY little paw extender. It's got a ton of roots in here though. All right, I'm gonna show you my bugs <laughs> and then we'll get those put out and then I'll be back on here tomorrow to do some more uh, plant chores with you guys. It's normally easier to open. <laughs> All the buggies are in here. Live bugs. And they always send a little, like a little sticker and packet about different kind of bugs. I order from Nature's Good Guys. I like ordering from them. And their shipping isn't outrageous either. And I've had good luck with my bugs from them. And 
Humidity is only 47 right now. We have a really cold night. So actually after filming tonight, I'm gonna clean my humidifier out and run it while the bugs are out, probably for the next week, just to encourage them to hatch more. So I got a new kind of mite that I haven't used before. And I'm gonna put these in my plant room. And I ordered more of the Californicus, which I might put a couple of these in my plant room on um, different areas. I'm not sure if these mites will be okay together or not. I don't know if mixing them would do anything, um, but I'm mostly gonna use the Californicus out of my plant room since they're mostly prevention and they attack different kinds of spider mites. But since I have a problem with a certain kind of spider mite in my plant room right now, I ordered the uh, Persimilis, which I've never ordered before. They um, specifically feed on two spotted spider mites, which I believe is what is in here. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna put these all over. I'll probably end up putting like three or four in my cabinet and the rest throughout my plant room. Yeah, maybe I'll just use these on like certain plants and then use these on certain plants so that they're not like together. I also ordered more SF nematodes. I do have a whole video on nematodes. I can link that down below as well. This is what I use for fungus gnat larvae and thrips uh, in the soil. They are microscopic predatory worms. Uh, so I'm going to be watering these in all of my plants again, and then I'm getting ready to film this weekend in a couple of days. I'm going to be filming for you guys an entire video on me bringing all my plants inside and I have some that need to be repotted. So I'm going to like share that whole process with you all and film it. And, um, I'm going to be watering these in my outdoor plants, you know, before I bring them in or like once I bring them in. Now I, did, I have to put this in my fridge like right away because this you have to keep refrigerated, but I ended up getting 25 million, which is a huge packet. Uh, last time I only got 10 million and it covered like my plants, but since I was doing outside plants too, I really wanted to get 15, but the only one that I could do was 10 versus, the next step up from 10 was 25. And it was only four more dollars to get 25 million. So I got the big packet and I'll probably mix this in like eight gallons of water so that I have enough to cover my entire plant collection. Uh, so yeah, that'll be fun. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm gonna stick this in the fridge and do this later when I'm ready to water in all of my plants because you have to do this all at once. I'm probably gonna put these out real quick and then um, eat some dinner with hubby and then clean my humidifier and then I can come back on and kind of show you later tonight if any of them hatch, but they normally take a little bit. The Californicus takes like a week to 10 days to start hatching. and start hanging them on my plants. I'm trying to see if I notice any active. I think these guys require a bit more humidity, like 60%. Uh, so yeah, I gotta get my humidity up. But the, they crawl out of the little holes on the back of the sachet there, you see? And you just hook this around your plant leaf. You just like hook it on a plant leaf like that and they just hang. Okay, I turn my brightness down so you could see a little bit more. Do you see that red spider mite right there? So I just hung one of the packets there. I must have missed, or some like are still on the plant, or maybe it was in the moss or something. So that's a bad guy. And I actually saw another one here on this one, up at that crevice right there, you see him? Right there, the little white one, that's a bad guy. I put six in my cabinet, two on each level. So I have one here, one on that Ethereum, and they should crawl around. And I put two on my Fridex, and then I have one down there and one down there. So that should be enough. And like I said, these guys both caught, or the bottom one caught spider mites. So I'm gonna put a packet on these guys as well. There, and we're gonna do one on this big guy here. And I think this 
shelf. I had some on this philodendron. This one always gets spider mites. Well, when I get spider mites, not that I always have spider mites, just whenever they pop up, it's always my philodendron. This one always gets them too. This is like the worst plant. If you want spider mites, get a variegated burl marks. I can guarantee you it'll get spider mites at some point. Um, I'm gonna mostly focus on phyllos and alocasia this time around. I'm gonna put one on this big calathea here because I feel like it's gonna need it. I'm gonna put one on my aria just to protect it because <laughs> you never know. Since these guys are all kind of touching, I'm just gonna do one on this black velvet and they'll kind of crawl since all the leaves are touching. That's kind of how I spread them around to most of my collection as I make sure a couple leaves are touching uh, the same plant or each plant and then they'll kind of like spread onto the others. I even found a couple on the string of pearls the other day. I hosted it off, but I'm gonna take one of these sachets and put it around my pearls. And hopefully uh, they'll just get any remaining. And they can kind of crawl, I think, all over the place here. What I might do is let my tie touch the pearls here. Actually, I think I might move, move this one over here on this one. And that way it's touching my tie constellation and it can get down and crawl down this way as well. Do you see? Treat two plants at once. I only have two left. They went so quickly. <laughs> um, I'm gonna open a few up out of the other packet because I still have to use those and put them on. Uh, just some other individual plants and then I'm going to focus them out of my plant room and I'll use like half of them probably for the plants that I have that I'll be bringing in this weekend that are outside. So hopefully most of my plants will be covered somewhat. I'm mostly just worried about the spider mites in my plant room. So good morning. It is the next day and we are going to continue with some plant chores. I took a look at the mites that I finished putting out last night, this morning, and I don't notice any activity yet. So I'm assuming they just haven't hatched or woken up. So I want to give it a few more days uh, to see how they do. Um, I spotted another like spider mite on my philodendron in my cabinet. I'm not sure if I showed that last night, so I'll show another peek of it. And hoping they kind of wake up and take care of that little situation. I haven't seen any more pop up, so I figured that one probably just had some hidden that I missed when I was showering my plants off the other day. Uh, so yeah, hoping they wake up soon. Again, I haven't had this kind of mite, the Persimilis before, so I'm not sure how active they are at first. And then I got my humidifier filled up here. It is filled up and has been running off and on. It's currently like 64 in here and 73 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. It was a lot colder earlier because um, it got cold here last night in Savannah. So it's been kind of running off and on. So it's probably used, I would say not quite half the water overnight because I've had it running on the warm setting, like full blast. This is the Levolt humidifier. I don't really use humidifiers that often anymore because I don't need it that much in my space because it's not like super dry. Obviously in winter it is more dry and I try and keep humidity up, especially when I'm doing mites. So yeah, hopefully they wake up soon and I get some activity. I think for today, uh, chore wise that I want to do, I have some props in my cabinet, uh, like alocasia props that I really want to take care of and move to pawn. But now that I have the whole spider mite mite situation, I don't know if I want to take care of those today or not, if I feel like messing with that. I've been like putting some of those off for a while. I have a couple that I want to do in pawn. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just do another pawn video. 
So I think what I might do is those two poles behind me, <laughs> my splendid and my glorious really need extended. Uh, so I might have to make some wire poles. I thought I'd be in the mood to do that today, but when I woke up, I'm like, I don't know if I'm in the mood to do that, but I keep putting it off. They are like this much over. <laughs> I really need to extend them because I don't really want to chop them yet. Because uh, I, I know it's going to be so much work for me this weekend, moving all my outside plants inside. So uh, I don't want to do like a bunch of work uh, today and just like exhaust myself, especially like chopping a pole. I feel like it takes an entire afternoon to make a pole, chop it, extend it, repot it. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Luna is being very cute. Let me show you her. She's sleeping in the sun. This is her new favorite spot. Now that the season is changing and uh, the cats are not wanting to be outside as much, my plant room is the only like warm room in the house. So I've been letting my gate open during the day so that if they do come in here, I can sort of keep an eye on them. And Luna's been coming up on my table here. I put like a little just like cloth down, but I, I think I might get her a little like comfy blanket or something that's more soft. Uh, so I did this so that she wouldn't try and keep jumping up in my window because she did that all last winter. She would jump up in my window and knock like my plants down. She just wanted to sit in the warm sun. She's just so adorable. Oh, hi. Yeah. Oh, I know. You just love the sun. Yeah. You're so cute. She's such a cutie pie. This is her new favorite spot in here. Yeah. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> you can see that humidifier now coming on, full blast. It's like shooting out of there. I really like the LaVolt. I got that one uh, last year and I only used it for like two weeks during winter, but I'll definitely use it more this year because I feel like, yeah, with the mites and everything, and since I have it, I'll definitely run it more often. Chai's in here too. Say hi, Chai. Hi. Hi, buddies. Yeah. Say hi. You warm in here? Yeah, I have to watch him though because he's the one that eats my plants. Oh, well, he'll try. So yeah, I don't really want to disturb Luna. I'm gonna just see what I feel like doing. I have to be in the mood to do certain things. I kind of want to go ahead and get these poles extended though so that I quit worrying about it. Because uh, my next chop is gonna be, I think my Cebu Blue. Mm, yeah, I have a lot of big pole projects coming up. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be chopping like five or six soon. Oh, I actually do want to take apart a couple poles. Maybe I will do that. Okay, first project we are going to do is this guy. This is my philodendron Milano Chrysum, and I have it currently on three thicklies and I don't like it. <laughs> this is a very finicky phyla for me. This isn't my original one. This one I got imported last summer from Root Greenhouse. It came in pretty bad shape and I had to end up starting over with it, pretty much propagating it and letting it grow. So once it started growing, I put it on a pole right away. I've been very neglectful with this plant and I don't know. I feel like I want to propagate it all the way back and start over. Some leaves have like this weird powdery mildew. I thought it was gone, but it looks like it's still spreading. Do you see? That happened pretty early on. So I'm wondering if the plant was like already infested with something because of these lower leaves having it. It's not on all the leaves, but it's weird that it's just on like this one, but not on the one below. 
I do have some Castile soap that dried that's leaving some spots, so I'll probably clean that off. And I don't see any spider mites or anything because they like my philodendron. I was thinking about doing this one in pond. I was actually thinking about just uh, propagating it, like not keeping any of these soil roots at all. I know. <laughs> I was thinking about doing maybe, I don't know, maybe like three leaves that are healthy that don't have like weird powdery mildew and like propagating them, rooting them in pond, just like with no roots, just sticking them in pond and they'll eventually root. Cause I don't want to deal with soil roots. I don't want to, these are all going to rot if I try and stick this directly into pond. And then I'll just like replant it on one of these poles and filling like maybe half of it with pond. I haven't done a pole with pond and I kind of want to do that with this plant. And I feel like pond would keep this plant hydrated more and not give me those wonky leaves that I get with this plant all the time. I had cut this plant off. Mm, I would say it's been probably a month. You can see where I cut it here and this is a new growth that's coming in that looks like it might get stuck. Cause I'm really bad about keeping some of these poles hydrated, some of the thickly ones, I just tend to neglect that corner sometimes more than I do like with my regular poles. This leaf is probably going to unfurl weird since I'm like redoing this and chopping it. And Milano is one of those philodendrons, just like my glorious and my uh, splendid the in my varicosum they're all stubborn phyllos in the sense that their nodes even though they're up against damp moss they won't push out and root into here I think these guys just really prefer like this one isn't even rooted in here at all either I think these guys just really prefer higher humidity than I have to offer them <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to use some plastic wrap around the nodes once they like reshoot and grow again. I think that's my plan to help encourage them to root because I don't even think I have hardly any, I have a little bit of roots down here from these nodes and I think that's why it did well initially and then I got lazy with it and then they grew wonky. But if this one doesn't do well, I'm not going to try Milano Chrysum again because it's not my favorite plant and if it's gonna be that finicky, I don't really wanna grow it. <laughs> I am okay not growing it if it's gonna give me trouble and a headache and stress me. So this is gonna be my last go with this plant and I'm gonna see what happens. I do believe I wanna get some Vizin 20 for uh, fungal issues uh, to spray on this plant because I don't have Vizin 20 and I heard it works well. So I might get that off of Amazon. I need to do an Amazon order for some planty things that I need anyway. So I might give that a go and order some and test it out. So I think I'll only keep three vines or three like cutting sections to do in pot and then the rest I'll probably just propagate. In the ones that have the powdery mildew, I'm probably just gonna have to cut those leaves off and propagate like wet sticks of this plant. I'm wondering if I should do a two leaf top cut or just one. So this is a bad leaf. I don't want this leaf, but these, this one is pretty here. I do know I want this top section. I just don't know if I want to cut it here or here. I think I'm going to cut it here and it's not rooted. So it should come right off. Right. I did it. Oh, it is rooted in here a little bit. Oh well, <laughs> it's not rooted anymore. I have been meaning to do this for a while because this has really been bugging me, this plant. I'm gonna clean these leaves really good uh, before because the ends are pretty sappy since I cut it. So I'm gonna have to let these dry before I do it in pod. I just don't know if I should do a big section like this or cut it again. Cause this is technically the top cutting since I cut it here already. So. This one shouldn't take that long to continue growing. I'm going to take this top section here off because there's nothing on it now. Mm. 
I'm gonna cut right here, cut below this node. And this part, since all these leaves are kind of like, mm, they look kind of bad, I'm not gonna keep those leaves. I'll just propagate the wet sticks. And I actually do have another cutting in my cabinet that I took, cause I had another like propagation when I did this initially. And when I cut the top part off, I stuck it in my cabinet and I do have a bottom cut of this in soil, but I'm not gonna keep any of that. Really like this middle section here. I like how tight knit all three of these leaves are together, but this leaf is like the infected leaf. So I don't wanna keep that. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this leaf because of that fungal issue. I just don't want that spreading. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut here. And so we'll have a node, an empty node that we can stick down in the pond and this should reroute from this node a new growth. I'm also gonna cut um, here, since this is an empty node, I'm just gonna take that off to propagate. So I'm gonna cut here. And we'll be able to do this like big chunky section, I think, in the section. Then I have the one in the cabinet too, so that would be four. I don't wanna do all four on a pole together, I don't think. I think that would be too much. It's fine, it's gonna grow new roots. <laughs> so here's my other section that I took off. So this will be down into pond, these two nodes. So those will root and that should push a new growth from here. Cause I really like these three leaves. So that'll look really cute. So I think I'll keep these two sections as is. Same thing, I'm just gonna cut these aerials off, these aerial roots. It'll grow new ones. I have one little wet stick. And I have one little leaf to do down in pond. So I have three sections here. So I'll just empty all the moss out into like a bucket because I do want to reuse this because that moss, there's nothing wrong with it. These little wet sticks here, I'll just do like in a container and put these in my cabinet. So I'm gonna wash these really good, these leaves really good in my sink and get some of the residue off. Just wash these and I am let me see the one that's growing in my cabinet. Yes, I'll just rinse that off. Look at the roots on that. So Milano roots really well in stratum. Everything roots well in stratum. So they'll have like one healthy cutting to do. And this one's already starting to grow and push a new leaf. So that's perfect. So I actually, I think I will do four cuts. I'm gonna lay these in here and we're gonna go to the sink and clean those.
Okay, so I have my self-watering planter. And this is a thickly pole that I had used already. This is the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is just stick my self-watering, or stick my moss pole down in here. And I'm gonna fill this whole thing with pond without trying to make a mess. I knew that was gonna happen. So I'm filling the pole with pond until like it gets to the top of the pot. I just wanted to add a little bit in first and then I'm gonna add my cuttings down in the front and then I'll finish filling up. So I'm just gonna stick them down in here. I'm just making sure to get the node part down far enough so it will be able to root into the pond. And I'm gonna fill the top portion like here up with moss so that they'll still be able to brew into here. I just wanna get these planted first. Just gonna clip that onto here so that it doesn't move around. This is the one that was in the stratum. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do four on here so that it's really full in case maybe one doesn't do well. I have a backup of one, if that makes sense. So yeah, I kind of just have it hooked on to the plastic like so. And then I'm gonna finish filling up with pond and then I'll get some sphagnum moss and we'll fill the moss part like here up. And this will be my plant and pond on a moss pole. And hopefully this one will grow better. I think, I think the pond is really gonna help this plant. I like, oh, I like to fill my pots up pretty full with pond because I feel like as it water, as you water it, it tends to settle in all the little crevices and air pockets. So I like to like shake it and then um, add it to the top.
She's looking so good already. So this is reused moss from the bottom section. And I'm gonna moisten this with a little bit of water. I did add some fertilizer to this water, the GT. Now we are going to get our plastic wrap. I was trying to try not to get sphagnum moss in the pond itself, but gosh, this is just all around messy. <laughs> so where we have the clips, we're going to replace with the plastic wrap around the nodes. So we are going to grow this plant this time. These nodes need to root into the moss. So we have four vines. So we're gonna take a piece of plastic wrap around this section here in the front. We're gonna do one more on this middle layer. And I am gonna really anchor in this top one over here. So I'm gonna do one more wrap around here. All right, so I have plastic wrap around three spots. Um, there, there, and then the top one here. So all I have to do is water this. And since I have fertilizer in here, I don't want to add additional fertilizer in this pond since Lechuza comes with pond. I'm just gonna take, I have a little bit of this distilled water left on my table. I was using this for tissue cultures. I'm gonna just add some distilled in here just to water this in.
Okay, so I only had one cutting that was actually rooted, the cutting that was in the stratum, and the other three are not rooted, but they'll root in the pond. Oh my gosh, I already love this plant so much better. Let me back you away. Look at it, it's so cute. I love it so much better. I really hope it takes off growing this time. I think it's gonna do well though. I think the pond will keep the plant itself from drying out and getting wonky leaves. And it will also help with humidity up around this plant. And then the moist moss will encourage rooting and extra roots to grow to help this plant size up and mature. So happy I decided to do this today. I am excited having a moss pole in pond though, because you technically can't overwater this because they're water roots. <laughs> so if you accidentally water the moss and too much gets into the reservoir, then you can just dump it out. I'm very curious how this plant's going to do in pond. Very, very curious. I'm super excited about this. I really am. I don't have any like moss. Only thing I'm worried about is like decaying matter and stuff falling into the pond, but I think it'll be fine. I don't think there will be enough like contaminants in here. And the only thing I'm worried about with this plant is that powdery mildew stuff. So I might look into getting some Fizen 20 to spray because I've tried the copper fungicide that I normally use and it didn't really seem to help because I feel like it came back. So I think uh, I'll look for that on Amazon and order it and just spray the leaves whenever I get it in. So cute, so happy with it. Hello, I'm back. I sort of got my mess cleaned up a little bit. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wet sticks of the Milano here. Like that. And then this is all the used moss that I saved from the poles. And I have a little plastic container. I'm gonna put some moss into here. Kinda like so, and I'm gonna wet this a little bit. And then all I'm gonna do is plop the wet sticks down with the aerial root side down on like top the moss like that and I'm going to just go down the line here. Oh, I need to cut a little bit of that guy off. They're all in there like that. And I'm gonna loosely cover with more moss. Try not to make more of a mess. Just the lightest little layer to cover those. And I'm gonna moisten again just a little. Okay. And then I have saran wrap. I think that'll stay good enough without having to tape it or anything. And I'm just gonna write November 2nd and I'm gonna write Milano. That's my little Milano propagation vessel. I'll just stick this in my cabinet if I can find room. I'm just gonna stuff it in there and they'll eventually root. I did do my Milano wet stick propagation in a video uh, earlier this year, I believe, because I ended up propagating all of my Milano wet sticks after the import last summer on the same plant. So uh, they'll pop and grow 
new leaves eventually and you know I'm not going to keep any of these so I'll eventually be getting rid of all those but yeah I'll just throw that in my cabinet and they'll do fine and again here's another look at this one <laughs> super excited for that to see how it does and how it grows once these nodes actually root in here I can remove this grafting tape it's just the plastic wrap Cool, super excited for that. Okay, I stuck you back here. Uh, instead of extending my wire poles, I think I might just quickly take care of this mandula because I really want this one to grow well. So let me show you. I don't know if you guys remember. So when I did my moss pole uh, maintenance day, that video, I'll link it where I took uh, was it 10? I think I did 10 pole extensions. I chopped my mandula in a couple of different places and it's activated some growth. It's like very drippy still from watering it the other day. So I'm like, I'm trying to show you without making a mess everywhere. Okay, so I chopped right here is one of the chops and what I was trying to do is so the plant was giving me all green on one side here. So I chopped it to promote variegation and I chopped it on the spot on the vine where the activation point was coming out on the variegated side because half of the stem was green and the other half is variegated. So one half was all green, one half was variegated. And I just did the same thing too with my Monstera adansonii that was growing, the variegata that was growing all white. So I'll make sure to link that video too, just so that you have more reference, because basically I was chopping on the side that the growth point was on the variegated side so that I wouldn't have this green coming out again, because I didn't want the green. So I chopped it here and it's activated a new growth point from this node. This is the new growth point and it's coming out variegated. This is a new leaf since chopping up here. This is a new growth point that activated that grew. And it also activated another growth point. So it activated this one lower. This is two nodes down below from where I chopped right here. And then it activated another growth point on this side. So activated two, and this one is growing variegated. Do you see that? So from chopping here, I have two more vines that are growing variegated. And I also chopped in another spot. I chopped right here on the vine. And this one pushed out a new growth, a new vine to grow on this side, which is variegated. So from chopping twice, I have three new vines growing. And then I have some vines down here that are starting to grow up, but this main vine is still, like one half of it is gonna continue to grow green. So what I might do, since I don't like this green growth at all, it's really hard to show you like the plant in its entirety. <laughs> I hope you can see okay. Um, I'm thinking about just taking this top section out of the pole, just taking it all the way off. That way this, these three new vines that activated and started growing since I chopped it will continue to grow up and attach. And I can just get rid of the all green that was growing. What I could do is take this top section out and stick it down here somewhere and just see what it does. But if it continues to grow all green on one side, I might just completely take it off. Or I might just go ahead and take it off. I want to undo the pull from the back here and just see if I can just take this top section off. Take this out from the top and then I'll just add this moss back in all the way up to the top.
Oh, look at that big <laughs> root that was growing in the moss. That's insane. I should be able to slide this top section out. Whoa, that is a huge piece. I'm gonna get rid of these green leaves. Um, I'm hoping that the variegation or it grows to be variegated and it's not gonna be green. I'm gonna stuff this through the inside down here a little bit and just see what happens with this plant. With this cutting at least. I'm just gonna stick it in somewhere down here. I'm just feeding the roots through the front of the pole. If this one does end up like continuing to go green, I'm just gonna take it off. Figured I might as well just stick it in here and just see what happens with it. Okay, I'm back. My camera battery died on me. <laughs> so let me show you the mandula here. So you can see the top growth is all pretty now. I cut off three green leaves. This one is kind of bugging me, but I'm just gonna leave that one. And again, this section over here is the one that I just added in. Right here's the base of it. And so this is the newest leaf. And so this one should be green because this was the one that was connected to the top that was doing the all green on one side. So if that one ends up doing the all green thing, I'm just gonna take it off and just like propagate it up. I'm not gonna include this one. Hopefully it'll start like getting bigger leaves in some time. I have a feeling all of this bottom I'm just going to get rid of. Um, I'm going to add an extension on once these start growing a little bit more, so soon-ish. I'll have, technically I have four unless this one grows green. And I'll let that grow up a new pole and then I'm going to chop it and then I'll probably just propagate all this up because, again, all this is small growth so there's no point in keeping all this. I just want like the big beautiful leaves. But if they all continue to grow, I'll have four vines growing variegated hopefully minus the one <laughs> and uh yeah we'll see what happens i put the milano down there right there i'm gonna put the mandula back there and again these are the wet sticks in here i'm gonna put these in my cabinet oh it is so sunny now thank you for spending the afternoon morning with me doing some plant chores it was good to get some of the stuff done. I'm glad that I took care of these two poles. It was bugging me. <laughs> now those are bugging me, so I'm gonna take care of those soonish. I do think I'm gonna go ahead and just chop my splendid again, so I'll do that in, the, in a separate video. And the glorious, I may just extend a foot extension and then chop it. I haven't decided what I wanna do. Those poles just take a lot of work and I have to prepare. And I think just because I have so much work to do with all the plants that are outside still coming in, I can't like focus on that right now. So I'll focus on that maybe next week. <laughs> but thank you for watching. I'll keep you updated on the uh, anthurium if it worked. Uh, the inflow won't die. I'll keep you updated on the mites and how they're doing and the spider mite situation. And then I'll keep you updated on my moss poles and how they're doing. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, leave me a comment down below. Thank you for spending your time here. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you guys again soon.